Hi, my name is Jawad Nabi. I'm an entrepreneur. I have um, nine different uh, businesses, companies, and um, about uh, now roughly 150 odd full time staff. Give me something new. I want it back through and through. Hey guys, it's Jared and Ryan here from Motor Persona. We're here today with another episode of Persona Diaries where we delve into business, success, and most importantly, the cars that Jawa Nabi has. We're at his beautiful home now, and you're gonna see a lot of shots, montages, clips, overlay of pristine, beautiful cars that a lot of people aspire to get to one day. Uh, my businesses range from uh, disability care to financial services and um, one of them is you know related to motorbikes and cars as well because that's something that I really love and, and um, yeah. I enjoy you gotta do something that uh, is not just work as well. My cars is my biggest passion and I'm trying very hard to turn that into a business as well so that um, I can not only continue to engage in something that I love but uh, hopefully I can make money out of it as well you know so when I say uh, make money out of it I'm thinking a few different avenues like um, buying and selling cars, yeah. um, uh, being in the automotive repair side of things. Describe your journey and what obstacles you've overcome to get to where you are. Um, the journey has been a very long one. Um, for me, my journey, I would, I'd like to take it right back because it's relevant to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, my life started in a refugee camp, far, far away. In um, a refugee camp in a place called Peshawar, which is Kind of, it's a city now, but at that time it was just a desert with tents. And uh, I was born in Afghanistan, where uh, the Russians invaded, and we ended up in the refugee camp. Or that's where I was born, and was lucky, one of the lucky few that had the opportunity to get out of that circumstances and end up here in Australia. The Salvation Army used to come and bring us food and mattresses otherwise we were sleeping on the floor and uh, parents didn't speak much English and uh, those were very very difficult times for us we yeah. we had a lot of love in our home but not not much else That mental journey of, of coming from that and growing up like that to where I am now has been um, the most challenging part was to change my mindset to break out of that that um, the persona or that that uh, you know they say poverty is a mindset and it's yeah. very true and you can get stuck in that cycle by starting to design your life around being poor. Did one thing when I was a very young man, I, I jumped on this chance to do something entrepreneurial and it really worked out for me. And um, you know, I made a lot of money very quickly in the space of a few months. I went on to you know, burn it all and 
didn't get anything, yeah. nothing was left of it. Yeah. But what it did was sort of, it, it, it widened my paradigm to think that it can happen for regular people like me as well. Before that, I used to think that a successful person was a person who always made the right decision, was really, really smart and never did anything wrong. And, um, and also there was a feeling of, oh, that's, you know, the mansions and the supercars and all that. That's for, that's for those people, you know, yeah. for them. It's not for us. As soon as you got that mindset of motivating yourself and such, were family and friends supporting you? Was that kind of that extra little bit of push to, to kind of reach those new heights? You know, the reality is unfortunately that people around you generally, you know, sometimes out of the best intentions will drag you the other way. Yeah. You know, people always tell you to do the sensible thing, you know, don't be foolish be sensible, all of that sort of stuff. And uh, generally your friends and family sort of, they start to encourage you and be helpful once you've already got some traction. Yeah. And you have to be mindful of that to not let people close to you or outside of your circles that have any kind of direct or indirect influence or uh, effect on you, not to let those people alter your mindset, change your plans, you know, interfere with your hustle. How, how do you distinguish what's productive and counterproductive? Well, you know, I have one simple rule that I follow a lot, and it's set yourself a goal, and it may be many goals, not just one. And every time you're going to say something or do something, think, just put it through a very basic litmus test. Is this action or this sentence that I'm about to say, is this going to take me closer to my goal or take me further away from my goal? Yeah. If the answer is it's going to take me closer to my goal, go ahead and do it. You know, don't think, overthink it. But if the answer is no, then don't do things for your ego. So it's been amazing to get those insights into the business and success that you have achieved and it's definitely something that Jared and I will relate to and look back on in terms of how we progress in our journey. Um, but ultimately why we're here is because of your cars. Um, so tell us, a little about, uh, tell us a little bit about the cars that you have and uh, why you chose those cars. Sure, so right now there's the McLaren 570S Spider, um, the S63 Cabriolet, the um, GTS, AMG as well, and uh, the X7 M50. Yeah. Now, they're very different cars, and I just I just got rid of, like weeks ago, a GT3 Porsche 911 GT3, which was a fantastic car. I, um, I miss it a lot already. Yeah. Um, so, the cars, you know, like the McLaren 570S is an exotic supercar, and gets so much attention um, it makes you feel really special it, the performance on it is mind-bending and actually that car the thing that I like about it the best it is it spreads joy everywhere I go because <laughs> When I say spread joy, I'm talking about I'll either offer them to take them for a spin, yeah, or I say, Oh, do you want to jump in and take it? I'll take your picture, and that just makes people so happy. The S63 is ultimate high end luxury, you know, six different type of massage on the seats, hot stone <laughs> massage, and uh, night vision, and you know, the sound system will blow your head off. Uh, the GTS, it's such a bright your face a uh, fun car you know it reminds me of um, when you're a little kid and you 
have those little remote control cars with the hot wheels. Yeah. It reminds me of that. And it's a very, very fun car. It drives completely different from the McLaren in the S63. Uh, my daughter's just like me, she's a car nut, so <laughs> she loves the uh, McLaren as well because it's really quick, so I think she probably picked the McLaren. And yeah. referring back to what you kind of mentioned earlier, your first business venture where your mindset changed, how you got a lot of money really quickly mm -hmm. and you blew it all. Mm -hmm. well, it's probably a weird question, but what's your biggest baller moment where you're either splurging out or just, just the most reckless thing you've done just for ego? For ego? I did that kind of thing which was reckless when I actually didn't have money. Yeah. Like I had enough to make it look like I, not to make it look like, sorry, for people to perceive that I had a lot more. And then at that time, I once or twice gave money when I didn't really have it to give. The amount of hard work you need to put in to be able to do silly things and not affect you, then at that point you mature enough that you don't want to do those things anyway. Yeah. So since I've, had the opportunity to splurge or do something crazy. I'm too busy. I'm working too hard. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I value what I have because of how much work I put in. If you were given the chance, would you do anything differently? No, only because not because I haven't done things that I regret. Only because where I am today, or anyone who reaches any kind of financial independence or financial success. Um, you always can look back and connect the dots and I don't know if I had not failed in so many different times and places would I have made it in the end. This was an amazing episode of Persona Diaries. We've been able to spend so much time getting really great answers. And of course, we're, we're personally developing with every person we, we interview. And it's really important just to take some of these things, apply it in a way that you can with your personal life and achieve goals. It's been such an amazing episode having you here on the show and we'd love being able to share your story with our audience and we really hope that they connect with it. Thank if you me. guys are loving these episodes, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. this video I love you cars um, thank you very much I mean you know maybe one day we'll be able to catch up uh, I'll be able to give you a few tricks on how to achieve success you know get get some more cars like this and um, I know it's really a big accomplishment to, to get cars like this and uh, yeah I guess I'll see you later what, what are you doing mate you're coming over there this is mine